Hi, let's start. Waiting two seconds. <laughs> Don't worry. Okay, thank you very much for coming and welcome to winning and delivering big projects from a small agency perspective. This is uh, my first talk in a DrupalCon. Uh, sorry about that, about my English and these kind of things. First of all, about me, I'm Ramon Villar. Uh, I'm a very active member of a uh, local community. Uh, I'm also the CEO and founder of Imbra. It's a, a Barcelona Drupal shop and very active on the Spanish community and now international. You can contact me on Twitter or on Drupal.org. It's the same username. And on Imbra.com. First of all, um, we will go away with uh, all the guide of this session. First, we will uh, try to introduce all the context, what is a small agency and which type of projects it's typical for us. Uh, which type of, of agency do you work? Uh, about five to 10 people? 10 to 15, 15 to 50, more than 50, and more than 100. Okay, there is big agencies too. Then what about the team and these kind of things? The sales process, that it's very different. The methodology about the internal like uh, development methodology and the sales or client methodology, uh, working closely with uh, clients, the culture about that, and what is the impact and how can impact in our finance and in our team. The context, uh, what is a small agency for me? For me, and very small agency is three to 10 people, maybe to 20 or 30 people. This is a multifunctional team. People in this kind of team, it's uh, business people, uh, design, development, testing, sales, all of that. Maybe usually it's done by the same person. Maybe on, on this kind of, of agencies, the salesperson and the project manager is the same. And with an horizontal uh, architecture, there is no big director and vice director and CTO and CEO and project manager. It's usually horizontal, okay? What are the typical projects for this type of companies? It's one to four months, maybe six months, but not more. Every project is from a different client. We have a lot of rotation of, of clients. It's uh, very hard at the beginning for us. And when working with big, big clients, usually we have a layer in the middle, like uh, advertising or publishing agencies. And this is not very good for small agencies because we can't contact directly with client and then we can't measure what is their needs and what is their uh, problems and what is our desire. Our desire is to remove these layers, contact directly with the client or with the product manager or any way the person who want this project. We want projects that is during more than six months because we need less rotation and focus on, on development or focus on business on on different things, but not changing every month on different projects. Try to repeat several projects in, in the same client because when I know a client, it's maybe better or not, depends on the client. It's better to try to win another project and how can we do it? And at the end, how we can do all of these things to transform my agency to be the perfect one for this kind of clients, how we can do it. 
please, if you want, if you have any questions or there is something that you don't understand, please, stand your hand. First of all, uh, which type of teams we can have? It's impossible to have all the expertise in this kind of, of agencies because uh, of the size, we can't have a person focus on sales and focus on performance or focus on backend development only. We have a multifunctional team usually, but we can focus on two types of agencies. We can be generalist or we can focus all of our development or, or our services in one or two or three services. If we are generalist, we have developers like on a Scrum that don't have any specific area. They don't have only one uh, knowledge on, on all the layers. They can do front-end, back-end, or, or anything, usually. But usually, we, you have a person that is doing all the front-end, but if, they, if you need something on back-end, they can do it, not at the best. Or you have a... Um, an agency focus on services because uh, you have a lot of knowledge, for example, on on performance or on on servers. Um, then you can focus on that. Have a set of services that you are very, very, very good on that, and try to to find the the clients for these uh, services. In my experience, for example, it's not. Maybe on, on the Spanish market, there is not very good on that. It's better the first type of agency. But I know a lot of uh, Drupal agencies that are focused on service and are very good. And what about the big question? How can you plan your resources uh, <coughs> Sorry, in working peaks? You have a project that, it's, that have problems. And you have a very, very uh, sized uh, team. How can you manage that kind of things? Then try to adapt your work and your team to the work. It's like a two-directional problem or two-directional thing. Your team needs to adapt to the work that you have. And the work that you have tries to adapt to your team. Beware of the mistake was my mistake to hire new people when you have a working peak. It's not very good because the working peak on small agencies is very, very uh, different. You can have two projects on one month. There is 10 projects and then two projects another month. It's not a problem. For me, the best one is to create a network of contracts, people that you teach them about your methodology, development and client, these kind of things, and try to work with them when you have a working peak. And what about the sales process? Because this is another big problem. How to introduce in that customer type? There is the classic thing, introduce you by mail or make a little visit or something like that. It's very dangerous for us, like a, and a small agency, because you want to go to a big client. They usually don't know who you are, and then they don't trust in you. But you can uh, use your um, your clients and try to introduce to another client of the same type by them. For example, if you work for an NGO and you have want to work with, for another NGO, try to use this one to introduce to the other one. It's something that seems very, very clear, but for small agencies, I think it's one of the keys of our performance. Another, it's be an expert and then try to be a need for them. Try to be an expert on something and then try to go to a, to a client and, and say, okay, I know that you need this thing. I'm an expert on that thing. We can work together. It's something that, for me, works. And for us, for example, uh, one of the keys to not introduce you by the marketing uh, 
uh, department, sorry, instead of the IT. For example, we are very good on, on, on project uh, development and, and performance and quality. Then we try to introduce in a, in, in a new customer for the IT department and not for the marketing because we are not focused on design and marketing and then we can um, hire for, with another um, agency, sorry. Then there is the methodology. Uh, how can you adapt yourself to the client methodology or then adapt the methodology of the client to yours? Big in front of a small, if you have a very, very big client with a very, very close methodology, that is something typical here, uh, then can be a very, pro a very big problem for you. Like, for example, the typical uh, big client that needs uh, documents for every change that you need to do or everything that you need to change on their systems and stuff like that, it's very, very hard for a small agency because most of the day you are, you are trying to create new documents for them and this is not uh, very good for you. It can be a little pitfall because you lose your time on this thing and not on, on the best that you are, that are development or performance or something like this. <clears throat> for example, for us, we, have, we divide our methodology in two different things. The internal one, that is how we work on our office, like uh, internal development, and how can we work or how we work with the client. For example, internally, we, we use uh, Agile as mandatory in small teams. We divide our teams in two, three, four people, and then uh, create user stories, something like that. Most of you work with Agile, yeah? There is something that you don't know Agile? Yeah, okay. Then organize ourselves in two or three weeks uh, sprints, and as usually, and a retrospective. This is very, very important for, for us, for example, to make a little retrospective uh, at the end of every sprint, to try to, to focus on the needs that the development team have, and then try to, to pass to the client and, and, and have the, the um, let's say, um, the needs, the new needs, sorry. Then how, how we work with the, with the client, we have only one person uh, as contact on, on, the, on the client or maybe a small set of persons because this is very good for us and very good for them as maybe they don't think the same but it's the, it's the best one because if not you have uh, meetings with people that are trying to, to give his, um, his opinion about something that maybe it's not the best and we try to usually have one person of the client side and one person of the IT department of this client side, and usually it's it's the best for us. Something that is not uh, very agile, but it's very good for for the client. Try to extract all the requirements at the first step of the project, not at the at the end, like on every spin. We try to extract all of them, most, and then go more in depth on every sprint, and then we, we can manage with the client all of these kind of things. Try to introduce the client on the prioritization of the, of the project, something that it's very useful for them, and make a demo meeting at the end of every sprint. But who will change? We as a a provider or them as a client? This is something that is a typical uh, question. For us, for example, clients usually don't use Agile as their methodology, but we try to introduce themselves on our methodology. 
adaptive work to use Agile. Don't try to use all Agile techniques at the beginning of, of the first project. Try to introduce them on every project that you uh, work for them. And try to, to introduce themselves to the positive things that they can bring with uh, Agile and what is the, the problems that you need to, to work on them. Work closely with, with the client, closely with manager. As a small agency, you need to remove all the classic layers and don't, don't try to, to communicate with a person on the client that then needs to communicate to the director and these kind of things. Try to be as, uh, as best as you can with the, the person that have the decision or the final decision on the client side. Replace your personal salesperson for a technical person because usually it's best because you only have one person on these kind of meetings. For example, for us, because we are a very, very small agency. And this is something that it's, is the best. Use plain and direct language to communicate with the client. Don't try to, to, to fool or something because... If you fail on the on one project on a on a big client as on a small, you will lose this kind of client and usually this type of, of client and don't hide problems and benefits. You have to, to be very, very clear with them and work closely with IT department. It's something that it's very, very, very important. Uh, integrate with them and try to be a kind of counselor. Uh, you should not be a simple provider because they have a lot of providers and they can work with a very, very big agencies with no problem. Try to be part of the team. It's very, very, very important. And what about culture and how can they impact to your team? How can you explain to your, to your client that you don't work uh, one week because you are on DrupalCon or DrupalCam or Drupal Day, it's something very, very difficult. Uh, how you explain that you waste time on models or fixing patches? Uh, for us, for example, we are very plain and, and we introduce these things at the beginning of the new uh, conversations with new clients, something that we have to be very clear at the beginning of our future relation. What about project and community? Project as Drupal. Uh, it's a benefit, we try to, to introduce that it's a benefit for them to improve Drupal as a platform because if they pay us, for example, to, to fix problems in models or patches, they will, be, they will have a platform very secure and if you do this and another client do the same, then it's better for them because we introduce themselves in the community too because if they are very active on the community and they want to hire as a client a new developer for their IT department, then a Drupal developer will be very, very comfortable to work for a client that works for the community. And what about the impact in your business? There is two kinds of, of impact. The finance is the first one. Usually big clients are very slow on payments. Uh, what about introduce Agile on, on, on payments? For example, we introduce um, a sprint budget or a sprint invoices. We, we invoice at the end of every sprint or a number of a sprints because uh, we are doing, for example, one, one year or one year and a half projects. And for us and a small agency, if we don't invoice uh, anything at the end, until the end of the project for us, it's something that will kill us. And what about the team? Uh, because the developers is the core of this kind of agencies. Then if a developer is, is bored to, to work with you, it's something that you that will convert in a problem. Then be careful with rotation of, of, of clients. 
it's better to rotate, for example, if a developer uh, are now finishing a project during a year, then uh, it's better for you as a, as a director or project manager to, to put this developer to a very small project or maybe to uh, innovation or something like that to try to, to motivate them. Try to combine big and small projects and motivation is the key. Involve the, the, the developers on every phase. Maybe, for, for example, for me, developers are involved on, on decisions in architecture or in, in um, analysis or something like this. It's something very, very important. And as a, con a conclusion, sorry, uh, this is not a to-do to follow. It's only a recipe. Try to introduce um, little steps in your, in your teams. Take care of your teams is, the, is something that is the key of your agency as a small. And humanize the relationship with the client. Try to be kind of a friend uh, or something that you can't. And IT department, for me, is the, the better um, thing to, to introduce you more than marketing. And sorry, maybe I walk very fast. Uh, thank you very much. This is my presentation. Uh, questions? <laughs> yes? Two questions. Yeah. Uh, uh, maybe. You, yeah. So, yeah, two questions. And, and one you were saying introduce them to Agile slowly. Yeah. Um, how do you do that? Because um, the big challenge we have in Agile is getting people to get their heads around the shift from you have a specification that is what you'll get for your money to it isn't going to be like that. So, so what, how do you mean by introduce Agile slowly? Okay. And the, the second question mm -hmm. was you said be an expert in something they need. Find out what they need, be an expert in it. I wonder if you could give some examples. Okay. The first one, um, we introduce slowly on, on Agile, but in the client side. Uh, for example, uh, for the biggest project that we are doing, uh, on the first one, we only introduce themselves in uh, user stories in client. Then I, for myself, I was the product owner, and then uh, me and the client write all the user stories and then go to the development team and all these things. On the second project, for example, I introduced the client to uh, user stories, uh, testing on, of, the, of every sprint and precision. And now that is the biggest one, uh, all of these things and then introduce themselves um, to, um, yeah, to sprints, to um, maybe if you want to to do two or three weeks of sprints, for example, prioritization, uh, testing, uh, and uh, writing tests. They write the test on VHAT or something like that, for example. And the second question was, sorry? Uh, examples, <laughs> um, becoming an expert. Ah, okay, sorry. Yeah. For example, for, for our thing is that uh, we are very focused on code quality and uh, how can you create a different kind of development with uh, features and, and continuous integration, Git, Behat, and these kind of things. We are very expert here uh, in Spain on that. Then we focus on clients that we think that they need this kind of development, for example, on this project, I, yeah, on this project and on this on this client, we introduce this methodology on their uh, IT department, and it's something that helps us to do this project and another project that we will in the future. Sorry, yeah, uh, you need to use the sorry, yeah, the microphone for the recording. Uh, how do you recommend to price and estimate the project? Well, this is the big question. <laughs> This is the big. Okay, uh, wow. 
For me and my experience, uh, for example, I try to introduce uh, the agile method of, of create budgets. That is something that um, introduces the client on budgets and how can you react this. But for me, for example, I try to, when I, when I have a very, very big project, it's something that it's very, it seems very usually, but for me it's not. Uh, I try to, to split them on different phases and try to focus on very little phases and then uh, introduce budget only on this phase. And then I think this is a project that usually it's two years project with something like 200,000 euros, then try to split them on five or 10 projects of 20,000 euros. And this is most easy to manage for you as a small agency because you have a set of 10 people on your development um, team. You can manage a two years project and then it's better for you as a salesperson to manage a 20,000 20, project than a 20, hundred. It's something of experience for me, for example. If I say, I, I, I try to, to recognize more or less the functionalities, then if I make this kind of things on the past, like search engine of, of, of panels or something like this, is okay, it's on the past I spent on that two months, then for me it's two months, something like this for me. More questions? Yeah. Hi, I'm Daniel. I got two questions. Uh, one is about uh, invoicing. Yep. Agile invoicing sounds really interesting. So if you could elaborate on that, both from the perspective from the client and you. And then uh, you talked a little bit about uh, introducing the technical guy instead of the sales guy. Yep. I am the sales guy and not the technical guy. <laughs> So it would be nice to hear a little bit something about that. Thanks. Okay. Then the agile methodology or, or invoices. For me, for example, if I, I split a, a project on maybe, I don't know, 10 sprints, then I invoice, invoice sorry, uh, on at the end of every pair of sprints, for example, two, four, six, eight, and 10. But after uh, they say that they pass all the test plan that they have. Then when for them it's the second or the fourth sprint is closed, then I invoice these two weeks or four weeks or five weeks or these kind of things. It's better for me and it's better for them because they have control of everything that they are spending and everything that it's closed, it's paid. And then the second was about, okay, the, the sales person, sorry. <laughs> um, for me, it's best to have a technical and not only a sales person in a small agency because in my experience, I uh, introduce myself on the IT department and then uh, they speak a different language than marketing one. and they, they uh, speak in technical uh, facts and I'm a technical person, then it's the communication it's, it's better for me or my, or my point of view. And if it's good your communication with the, the IT department, they, as an internal department, they will go to the marketing thing and they introduce ourselves that we are a very good company or not a very good company and it's better. But if in your case you have a very good person, you for example, in, the, in that case on sales and you have a very good communication with the marketing uh, department, is it not a problem? This is only my point of view and my case. Sorry. Yeah. Hi, I'm Tatiana, I got two questions for you. Um, so one of them was very interesting you were introducing and, um, on this topic from your previous questions around how you introduce your clients to the use of Agile. Um, so I understand you could kind of convince them like now we have this cool format with this user story, I want to do two week cycles and get you more involved. Um, 
but how about getting the buy-in in terms of uh, deadlines and you know, they're, they're usually fine splitting features down on smaller cycles, um, but certain clients have very um, tight requirements in terms of I need it by then because I have marketing campaigns or my operations are all around, I don't know, game matches, for example. Um, so how do you get them? Because it's very difficult to be able for own projects to actually be able to, you know, predict that you're actually gonna hit that date. Okay. Um, so how do you go around convincing them it's I'll, about, ha I'll have you by that day. By your question is about dates, most, project. Yeah, okay. most, uh, you have the most valuable items of what you're asking for on that date. You cannot guarantee up from 18 months ahead that you will have, I don't know, 200 and all requirements. So that would be your first question. <laughs> Sorry. Second question um, is around, I don't know how you handle your projects, because you mentioned you rotate people once they finish the project to a different one. Um, and I don't know if you, within your business model you also run maintenance on the projects that you deliver, and whether if you have flipped people to different projects, then how do you handle the maintenance requests and the support? Okay. Thank you. Uh, the first one is about the date, or date project, or the date fixed project. This is something that it's very difficult for, for us as a small, and for big, I think. Um, in, in our case, that we have also this kind of projects, we try to, to manage uh, on the requirement part that uh, we try to to be very clear that the requirements are very very clear and try to introduce the the the, the development team on this kind of of projects because the problem is will be not on the client side will be usually at the development side not because the development are not good only for for times things and i try to introduce uh this kind of contractors that i mentioned uh, if there is a problem with dates, usually I use uh, contractors because they don't uh, work only on office hours. They work usually more or they have uh, a little uh, um, web on, on, on his part. And then try to mix our internal uh, team with this kind of contractor. And, and for, in my case, uh, it works. And the second was about, sorry, maintenance. Ah, the maintenance. Yeah, the same team that works on the project is the same team that maintains this kind of project. We try to introduce uh, a small project or different projects for the team only for the motivation because if you are working for a year that you start uh, very, very happy, but at the end of every project, you are, yeah, <laughs> this, you are going down. Then try to introduce to to the developers uh, something that can be very, very good for them. But the maintenance, we need to introduce uh, other, not not to introduce other developers, but. In our life cycle, we, we work with uh, code review that there was a, a, a presentation and, and with uh, Pedro and, and Rodrigo, that are our developers. And for that reason, uh, if, if, for example, there are two people uh, that are working on, on project, there is a third one that did review this project, then if there is any problem that this uh, these guys can't work on that project, then there is something one, two, or three that is usually reviewing projects, and then they know or they have the knowledge of the project. Maybe not all of them, but usually 90%. Then we can introduce this team to the project. This is usually, it's something that for, for uh, small agencies is very good. Try to introduce this kind of code review because all the knowledge base will be split on all the all the teams and not only in one mind. It's something that for me it's it's very very useful. Great. Okay. No, you have to. Sorry. No, no. For the microphone only. Uh, are you using the remote uh, contractors and uh, how you manage them? If you do. How can how you use remote teams uh, like yeah. in other parts uh, of the globe or just in here in Spain? About the methodology or about? No, the, the, are I don't you understand. Employ, employ the you, you freelancer from yeah. uh, from other parts uh, in the world and not only from Spain and how if yes? How no, you we, we usually use uh, people from, from Spain, from, from Barcelona because we have 
our network very very close. Usually we have one on in London, but it's we have trust in them because we work with them since a lot of years ago. But uh, your question is about trust or about Ah yeah 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 yeah. Uh, we work on Scrum. We make a uh, daily every year, uh, every day at on Skype, or on, on a Skype yeah, on, on Hangout for in our case, and we use the same methodology. Uh, their code is reviewed by all the team, and the team um, code is reviewed by by the, this contractor. There is the same methodology. It's something that you can uh, vary your, the size of your team depending on the time and and not to be a problem for for your finance because if you have a very large uh, team then you have a finance problem i mean you have a very small team then you can't um, you can have more and more and more projects it's something that you you can do it and we try to manage as a team developer as an internal developer the same methodology and the same the same Yeah. Um, I'm working for a quite big company, and if there's a call of proposal and we want to get this uh, client, we easily spend like 40,000 euros for getting this. <laughs> and for a small agency, I think it won't be possible. You will be broke easily after a while. Um, so my question is, how do you get new clients? Um, what is the way to not spend that much money in proposals for example okay as a small agency the the problem can be that you can you can go to a client that will be your your end it, it will crash you and to go to new clients we spend for example a uh, time from the the sales department the sales department are me and another guy and we try to introduce ourselves like meetings and something like this and try to start with a very small project. The first project for a client, it's not usually a big one, only because they didn't know you and they, they don't want to, to pay a lot of money for a small agency that they don't know. And you as, a, as, a, as a, an agency that want to 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 go ahead on, on time you don't want to 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 work for the first time with a very big uh project with a client because you don't know that and then try try to do this kind of things it's not maybe it's as is there a response for your question yeah okay it's, it's all then thank you very much for your time
Depends on, on the client. Because you are small or uh, No, we are a company which is not an uh, agency, but uh, okay. I just, just interesting this okay, okay. for me. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, we just a uh, reports company. We just do our stuff and okay. managing team. But it's interesting for me. It's good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
trabajar con el equipo, mira, no está bueno. No, 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 es, porque el problema yo te enseño cómo yo trabajo y tú durante tres meses vas a ser parte de mi equipo. Sí, sí, sí. Si aún me dan con el pega, sí, es una persona muy carnal. Pero la verdad es que normalmente como le estamos dando training gratuito, por decirlo así, no me pagan porque al final eso es como que entro en el pega. No, y eso, y eso no es nada evidente tampoco. O sea, no estamos, nosotros estamos empezando ahora con eso y bueno, lleva mucho de inversión técnica, de conocimiento, de cambiarle el chico un poco a la gente también, que eso es muy complicado. empezando a trabajar con los developers y a convencerlos un poco de, venga, digamos, trabajar más juntos con nosotros porque tradicionalmente venimos de un background en el que han estado separados, digamos, y ahora quiero un poquito quitar, si quieres, digamos, lo que es la barrera automática. Si tú quieres, si quieres hacer alguna cosa y tal, si tienes dudas, ya lo digo, solo por favor. Sí, estupendo. Solo por favor. Sí, pues, te mandaré alguna cosilla. No sé cómo Thank you. 